Hey, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com. Moving on down the tabs here under the Advanced Preferences in Studio One, under the Automation tab, uh, a couple of things here. Uh, first, let's jump to the bottom. Uh, this is probably the more uh, applicable to your situation than these others. Uh, default envelopes for new audio tracks. This has to do with what, uh, if you always find yourself automating volume and panning, uh, but not the mute on a track, then you wouldn't want the mutes to show up. Let me show you what that means. Uh, if we come back over, here's a vocal track. If you click down here on this cute little waveform dealy bob, uh, it actually pulls up automation lanes for you. So they're already there and ready to go. You don't have to create those. Uh, and it, it, you'll see it pulls up volume and panning. Now, if we didn't have this setting uh, engaged for that, there would be no lanes there or all three would show up. So for me, volume and panning, whoop, <laughs> Uh, let's get back to where we were. Volume and panning are kind of the two main things that I automate. Um, really probably panning more than anything else. So you can change which one of those show up just to give you more streamlined view. You don't want to see all the mute lanes if you never automate mutes, for example. Maybe you just mute regions or specific parts of an audio file, which you can do in Studio One really easily. Uh, and maybe you do that instead of using mute automation. In that case, you don't ever need to see it. It's just an easy way to keep things clean on the screen. Okay, a couple of other things here. Automation follows events. So this is cool if you create, uh, let's say you have a hand clap uh, thing and you've actually put uh, some automation in there to uh, maybe make the clap happens and then you automate the volume up after that so you hear the sound of the big room you recorded. Something That's a bad example, but let's say you have some volume automation at the end of that hand clap and you want to copy that hand clap over to another section of the song. Um, if you have this enabled, then that volume automation on that hand clap is going to follow that event. So you can copy it, paste it over here, and it'll also paste the volume automation with it. So it sounds the same. Now, there are some instances where you, maybe you don't want this to happen. Uh, if you're copying an actual lead vocal part uh, that you already have some vocal automation on, and you want to move that uh, to replace a part of a lead vocal in the last chorus, maybe, uh, in that case, you may not want to copy that volume automation, so you'd have this disabled. Typically, um, I'm doing all that stuff before I've written any automation, so I don't need this to be disabled. This one makes sense for me. Uh, disable events under automation envelopes. That means when you're seeing the automation envelope on top of a track, uh, you can't actually get to the track itself. So for example, uh, when we engage automation by pressing A, and we're looking at, say, the volume on this vocal track, we actually can't get in here and click and do anything to the audio itself. We can just adjust the, the, uh, the volume envelope here. And that's typically makes sense. So you're just doing one thing at a time. If I need to get to the audio, I can press A and then I can come in here and do things to the audio just like just like always. Um, so that's uh, that's the third thing. There's one other. Let's look at it real quickly. Uh, automatically add envelopes for all touched parameters. That seems excessive. Uh, meaning if you touch an EQ high gain knob, it's going to create an envelope for that parameter. Maybe you want that, but I'd rather not add those automatically. That's a ton of parameters that'll just be sitting there under the hood. So instead, I like to, and I'll show this in a future video, if I touch a high EQ knob and I want that to show up uh, on as a parameter that I can automate then, then what I'll do is I'll touch the high EQ volume here. Okay, I've touched it, and then I can go up here and see, oh, you, the high frequency gain knob has been touched, and I can click that A button, and it'll create an automation lane for that parameter. So I'd rather do that automatic. I'd rather do that manually than have it automatically happen every time I touch a parameter. Maybe that's helpful for somebody, but I can't think of a situation where that would be a good thing. So there you go. That's the next section for automation, and we're almost done with preferences videos. I know these are super exciting. Then we'll move on to some more exciting stuff. Okay, thanks for watching.